This is my crazy theory on the nature of the Land of Shadow, how it ties to the lands between, trailer timelines, and potentially what lands beyond the sea means to the story. I envisioned this theory before the DLC trailers, but the new trailer just added an insane amount of supporting arguments to it. There is a popular theory that the Land of Shadow was physically in the center of the map and was concealed by Marika's Whale. Well. This is very compelling theory and it does not contradict mine. In fact, my theory only works if it's true. And the new story trailer might just confirm it. From the first time I heard the term the lens between, I questioned myself. Between what exactly? You might argue that it's just a common way to name lands in fantasy. Miyazaki could have copied it from other works. Middle Earth from the Lord of the Rings, Midgard from the Norse mythology, Midden Garden used in Anglo-Saxon mythology, or even Midland from Berserk. There is also a Middle Kingdom from our real history, which China described itself. But it's not that simple. Let's take a closer look at the word semantic. In most examples, the main focus is on the part mid. This is the center of their world. Consider how the Chinese king viewed his lands as the center of civilization and culture, surrounded by barbarian lands. This underscores the perspective of China as the central, most important realm in the world. Similarly, terms like Midland or Middle Earth represent central lands where all significant events occur. It means lands that are the center of events, the heart of the world. However, Elden Ring takes a different approach. Look closely at the name The Lands Between. This is fundamentally different. The name suggests it's not the center of the world, nor the most important land. Instead, it implies a place that exists between other lands. Think about the application of this. Unlike traditional settings that emphasizes a central, dominant realm, the name of Lands Between itself hints at a fragmented world. It shifts the emphasis from a singular, dominant realm to a network of interconnected regions, each with its own significance and story. So, between what then? Here's my theory. It is the land between life and death, the land between light and shadow. And the land of shadow is the land of death, the spirit world. Uh, wait, wait, I see a skepticism. You hear these words hundreds of times. Everyone knows about the Land of Shadow being the spirit world theory. But I promise, my explanation and argumentation will be new to you. You might even start to believe in it, even if you are previously inclined to reject it. First, let's look at how we access the lands between. To across the fog, we need to die. Every single tarnish died somewhere before they were sent to the lands between. As we see from the trailers, Characters like Hora Lu, Goldmask, Tangeter, Fia, Gideon, and countless other tarnished are portrayed as dead. Marika's own words also support this idea. In Marika's own words, ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live and die. The lands between is a place where people ascend before going to the spirit land. It's an in-between stop point, with the Earthry and Elden Ring located, governing life, death and all realms. The lands between is clearly inspired by the river Styx from Greek mythology. This river serves as a boundary between Earth and the Underworld, separating the realm of the living from the realm of the dead. The souls of the deceased are carried across the Styx by Charon. Without the proper payment, a coin, Souls are left to wander the shores of the river for eternity, unless they have a special permission or divine intervention. This mirrors how Marika specifically permitted the Tarnished, extending their grace. Definitive proof that FromSoft drew inspiration from this myth comes from Karen's design. He is literally the same as Tibia Mariner, a character closely tied to death. One Tibia Mariner even drops health and steeple which guides the death of the spirit worlds. In Elden Ring, death is closely associated with water. Godwin is depicted as mermaid, Tibia Mariner is a man in a boat, and a village overtaken by death root is called the Summon Water Village. 
Additionally, you can kill those who live in death by throwing the holy water pot at them. Water as a symbol of death isn't unique to Elden Ring. In real life, water often represents danger and the unknown, which can be deadly. This association has deep roots in mythology and folklore, like the river of sticks above. This is why the center of the map, where the land of the dead should be located, is just an ocean. It's also why we must crawl the sea to reach the lands between. But wait a little bit. Doesn't the Crimson Hunt imply that Ruderica does travel to the lands between on a boat? And what about the many boats in the Radan Arena? So it's possible to enter the lands between without dying? Your theory is wrong, you may ask. But for centuries, the sea was seen as so dangerous and unknown that people believed that land of the dead could exist somewhere beyond it. Take the river sticks again as an example. Living heroes like Orpheus and Heracles crossed the sticks on a boat to enter the realm of the dead without dying. People really believed we could just physically sail to the land of the dead just as Ruderica did. One more thing to discuss before we go to the lands of shadow explanation, Farum Azula. I believe it is closely tied to death in lands between. Let's start with timeline. It's evident that Farum Azula is long gone. It's not in the sky anymore. You cannot see Farum Azula from the lands between. Its ruins are scattered everywhere now. However, it exists beyond time, which is why we can still access it, even if it's not physically here. I theorize that Farum Azula was once connected to the lands between, even during the shattering, and it was only disconnected later. I have three reasons to support this belief. Starting with the weakest reason, but still effective, item placement. Assuming, of course, from software didn't place items at random. We can find several items in Farum Azula that shouldn't be there if it had been disconnected from the lands between long ago as it commonly accepted. The first category of items indicate that people from the capital could travel to Farum Azula after Kranzak's attack. Malformed Dragon Helm from Draconic Sentinels. After the great ancient Dragon Kranzak's attack, the Sentinels had an epiphany. The only way to truly protect the Eldry was to become dragons themselves. Ancient Dragon Apostles Cookbook. Techniques taught by the capital's ancient dragon cult. Golden Lightning Fortification was used by the Knights of the Erdtree during the assault by the Great Ancient Dragon Grand Sax, and the bitter war of the Ancient Dragon that followed. And Ancient Dragon Prayer Book was used by the capital Ancient Dragon Cult. All those items didn't exist before the Erdtree and Godfrey's Age, so people at that time must have somehow traveled to the farm Azula. The next two items tell us that Farm Azula was at least present during the Shattering. We can find a Golden Seed and a Rune Ark there, and those didn't exist before the Shattering. When the Elden Ring was shattered, these seeds flew from the Eldry, scattering across the various land. If Farm Azula had already fallen at this point, we wouldn't be able to find a small Eldry or Rune Ark there. The second reason is the death route. According to the lore, later the rune of death spread across the lands between through the underground roots of the Great Tree, sprouting in the form of death root. It spread specifically through the roots. How possibly could those roots access a floating island? Yet, we can see death root and those who live in death in Farum Azula. This suggests that Farum Azula must have been connected to the lands between at least after Godin was killed. The final reason is the enemy's placement. Again, assuming they are not random. Dogs and crows in Kyalid seems to be afflicted with rot, which is why the proportions are distorted. But we can find the very same dogs and crows in mountain tops. Why? I have a theory. What if Finlay, when rescuing Melania, took a faster route? through Farum Azula and the mountain tops. We don't see any traces of rot in the commonly accepted way. But if they took millennia through Farum Azula, it could explain why the mountain tops also became corrupted. This would also explain why the same species are found there. They were neighboring clans. Additionally, we can find the rotten stray. 
a dog corrupted by the Scarlet Rot in Far Mazula, which further supports this point. We cannot see many traces of Malenia's army being in Far Mazula because she didn't go to the same place as we do. According to the Azula Beastman Ashes, Beastmen from doomed farm Azula, the slowly crumbling ruins in the skies. These ruins are said to be the remains of the giant mausoleum. So, the current farm Azula is only small part of the vast mausoleum it once was. I have one more piece of extremely speculative evidence, but I don't want to stretch the video any longer, so pause if you are interested. Now conclusion about farm Azula. I believe the lens between once looked like this, a closed circle, with the land of the dead at the center. The only way to read the spirit world is through the lens between, through the earth tree. But after Goodwin's death, and some time after, Farmazula was disconnected. And we know it was only later the rune of death spread across the lens between. So it was after the shattering floor, but still it was caused by the Godwin's death and the death root spreading. So the map starts looking like this, a broken circle with a huge waterfall. From software really like the symbolism, with some liquid leaks from the ring. The eclipse from Castle Mona, the dark sun from the Dark Souls 3, or the Crucible. And remember, the water symbolizes death in the Elden Ring, so we can interpret water leaking from the land of shadow to the outside as death leaking into the living world. This aligns with the death root spreading. An interesting fact supporting this theory is that Godwin is referred to as a scion of the golden bar, sentenced to live in death. In Greek mythology, the golden bow was used as a token to gain safe passage to cross the sticks and enter the underworld. So it's like Godwin is providing a new way to die through the death root, via the new hole in the ring, through this waterfall. Finally, to the land of shadow. Let's discuss the factual information we know. From interview, land of shadow takes place on entirely separate, physically separated map. It technically occupies the same space as the lands between, the same universe. But due to something story related that you won't reveal today, this has become physically disconnected. The Land of Shadow has been removed from the lands between and hidden from the outside world and this veil is a symbol of that. I know, you've heard the veil theory and the idea of the Lands of Shadow being in the center already, so let's accept that theory and move on. Starting with the timeline and the reason why it was hidden. Genocide alone is not enough reason to conceal events. We note about the genocide of giants after all and the defeat of the Storm King. It's not a secret that the Golden Order executes all these who oppose it. I am certain that the Land of Shadow was created upon the creation of the Golden Order. Before that, it was called differently and was visible from other lands. The Land of Shadow was a spirit world prior to the creation of the Golden Order. The new story trailer, it describes the birth of the Land of Shadow and the birth of the Golden Order, not the birth of the tree itself. I have four reasons to believe this. Look at those weaker men. They imply that these events occurred after the birth of the earth tree. If you look closely, you can see a fire giant's head. But wait a moment. Fire giants were extinct after the creation of the earth tree. We know this from this missing stone item. Sought to have been used to hone the weapons of the champions of the war against the giants at the birth of the earth tree. The main motivation to kill the giants was the fact that they could burn the earth tree. So, if we see fire giant's corpses here, it must mean these events took place after the birth of the earth tree. The second reason is the start of the trailer. It is heavily implied that this is the scene depicting the defeat of the gloom-eyed queen. The corpse look like the skin of the godskins. And then there is a sky. It transitions from a gloom to golden sky. This is definitely not a random stylistic choice. She was defeated right before the creation of the Golden Order, marking a pivotal moment where Marika conquered the death. This portal could serve as an entrance to the Earth Tree, 
where you can travel from the gloomy land of shadow to the golden lands between. The third reason is valid if you accept the theory that the land of shadow indeed was a spirit world. What is the Golden Order? From the bending rune of the Death Prince, the Golden Order was created by confiding death in death. The signature feature of the Golden Order is the immortality of every being, the absence of death. If death is removed from the world's formula, the spirit world should also cease to exist. It was obscured by the current order, and now lies only in the shadow of the earth tree. Now for the fourth and final reason. This promo material, which Bandai Namco sent to followers states, Marika's Golden Order was birthed from Shadow. The story trailer gives us the same information. An affair from which gold arose. And so too was Shadow born. The Shadow was born at the very same time as the gold arose. By gold, they specifically mean the Golden Order. We know this because gold existed long before Marika, even in Placidus X time. And by shadow, they mean the obscuring the lands of the dead. Additional evidence that the land of shadow is indeed a spirit world is the only known way to access it. By discarding your body, only spirit can travel to it. To reach the land of shadow, Mikola abandoned his golden flesh. Torrent seems to have been in Mikola's possession, and Torrent, as we all know, doesn't have a body. It is a spectral state after all. Melina, who took Torrent from its former master Mikola and gave it to us, must have been in the land of shadow to retrieve Torrent at some point. And you see what? She has no body. She is burned and bodiless. The reason for which I live. Burned. And bodiless. And for the final and interesting observation, the death of the soul is associated with water. But what if the death of the body is fire? Bodiless Melina is burned, and Rani's corpse also appears to be burned. Mikola's body is found right after Mog, who used fire extensively. Water and fire together balance and neutralize each other, inflicting no more danger. Thanks for watching everyone. Remember, this theory is highly speculative and differs from my usual analytics videos. It could be completely wrong. And I haven't watched the TLC previews, so I don't know if it's been disproven or proven already. If you enjoyed the discussion, please like and subscribe. No, please like and subscribe uh, even if you dislike it. <laughs> uh, so, see you next time.